Live from the Sky News Weather Centre, this is the 10 Minute Briefing. Good morning, thanks for joining us here on Sky News Weather. Welcome to your 10 Minute Briefing. I'm Rachel Rays. This is our Chief Meteorologist, Tom Saunders. And in the briefing today, the Wild West, we've had heavy rain and storms on the West Coast overnight. We also have a number of emergency warnings in place for bushfires burning out of control near the southern coastline. Three bushfires, Tom, burning out of control. There are emergency warnings for three bushfires in this area in Western Australia near Albany. And there's one of them that started up on Thursday, but it has expanded overnight due to dry vegetation and gale force northerly winds. A shot from overnight, it's a massive fire now, and there's more than one of them. There's dozens of fires actually all together burning through the southwest corner of WA, which is quite remarkable for this time of year. Now, even though the temperatures aren't particularly hot, it's not summertime, what we have seen is strong to gale force winds overnight. Uh, many areas of WA, including Albany itself, has seen gusts overnight in excess of 100 kilometres per hour. We're now joined by Sky News Perth reporter Nicole Hamer. Nicole, thank you for your time this morning. We're going to start with the bushfires and we've just had an update. Now three emergency warnings in place. Yeah, that's right. It's absolutely devastating for firefighters down there who have worked tirelessly through the night to try and get these blazes under control. I'll just read out those three emergency warnings that are in place. Now, the first one is issued for people in an area bounded by Palmdale Road, Taken Up Road, Settlement Road and Morand Road. Now, that's in Napier in the city of Albany. Another one is in place for the western part of Redmond, Marbella, McHale, Ellico and Torbay. And also, just in the last couple of minutes, an emergency warning is in place place for parts of Napier itself. Uh, firefighters are really battling against the clock at the moment with those strong gusty winds fanning the flames, making it incredibly difficult for them to get these blazes under control. Now, the Albany Mayor has spoken not too long ago to local media and he says this is one of the worst situations he has ever seen in the region. Local media is reporting that some homes and properties have been lost. Uh, we understand that a farm state property near Peace Bay may have been lost in these blazes. It's certainly not good news for firefighters who are trying to get these fires under control. Although rain is expected to fall in Albany today, it is going to be fast moving rain, which means the rain alone will probably not be enough to put these blazes out. Here in Perth, it is an extremely different story. We've been hit with our first cold front of the season and we were battered with heavy rain and strong gusty winds overnight. It did prompt severe weather warnings to be issued by the Bureau of Meteorology. Now down in Bustleford, they uh, had a drenching of about 65 millimetres of rain. Uh, here in Perth, it was almost 30 millimetres. Uh, but it did also prompt uh, warnings for possible flash flooding. Now, SES crews were called to around 90 homes. They understand that most of the damage was minor, but thousands of homes were left in darkness last night uh, with fallen power poles. Uh, Western Power did confirm this morning that most of those homes affected and that were left in the darkness last night have had their electricity restored this morning. Now, of course, this week uh, we have had glory weather here in Perth. Uh, in the high 20s, 27, 28 degrees. Uh, the next 24 hours are going to be quite miserable, but we expect the sunshine to return in the middle of next week. Nicole, thanks for all those details. So there we go. We've been talking about over the past few months about the lack of rain in WA and the effect it's had on farmers in that state. Well, we've had that rain on the west coast, but now we're seeing because of that lack of rain, major bushfires burning along the southern coastline. Let's have a look now. We spoke about those windy and very gusty conditions that are set to continue through today. What kind of gusts have we seen? These are the maximum gusts we've had since midnight. So there's Albany 102. Now we've had gusts before midnight, even up to 113 kilometres per hour around Cape Naturalist in Perth Airport. That a gust last night of 91 kilometres per hour. Here's the radar. Band of rain and storms hit the west coast last night. Perth, it started raining about 8pm. That rain band, which is moving east with the front, has now broken down over the gold fields. You can see around Albany, there's not a lot of rain. What we have right now is still widespread showers that are through the western parts of the state. Now, around Albany, we're only going to see fast-moving showers today. That's not enough rain to extinguish bushfires, so they're going to be burning all day. You see Albany's only had 0.4 of a millimetre since 9 a.m. yesterday, but Bustleton's had 67, Bunbury's had 58. These are massive falls, Rachel. 
They certainly are massive falls. Uh, we do need some falls in Albany, Albany, though, to help with that fire, Tom. In terms of the forecast for Western Australia, what can we expect? Because we do have more showers on the cards today, more storms on the cards with gusty winds as well. It's definitely not over. The front's gone through, but following the front, we have a deep low pressure system that's off the southwest coast. There it is on your screen. Now, those red arrows indicate gale force winds. Now, as that low nears the coast this afternoon, the winds will increase through the southwest corner of WA. So we had a burst of gales overnight. A second burst of gale force winds will come through Friday afternoon and Friday evening. And we'll also see the showers increasing again through that southwest pocket of WA. So some good falls are on the way in that southwest area. As a result of the ongoing strong winds, we do have a warning in place. Gusts up to 100 kilometres per hour. Now, east of Albany, the winds will ease pretty quickly this morning, but west of Albany, they'll increase. And from Bustleton to Albany and to the west, we could even see gusts in excess of 125 kilometres per hour. Now, because of the strong winds, uh, we'll continue to see these bushfires being fanned mm -hmm. by those strong winds. We have dry vegetation. And with winds of that strength, we could even see some property damage and trees coming down. That can lead to power outages. Mm. All right, let's head now to the southeast of the country where we have seen some very dry weather, many areas in drought, but we are expecting some showers in the coming days, Tom. Yeah, we've got a second front. It's going to hit WA on Sunday. Though the first front's slipping away, but that second front is going to bring a burst of rain. Now, ahead of it on Sunday, there's some rain there in SA and Western Victoria, but not much in that. But here it is. Between Monday and Wednesday, we'll have a burst of widespread showers moving through southeastern Australia. It is much needed. However, this system's not going to link up with moisture from the northern Indian Ocean. Now, through the Murray-Darling Basin, what the farmers are looking for at this time of year is what's called the Northwest Cloud Band. All the farmers out there, you know what I'm talking about, Northwest Cloud Bands. It's not going to be a northwest cloud band. We need the front to, to push up just a little bit further north to grab some of that tropical moisture. Not going to happen this time. Tell us about the Murray-Darling Basin, the food bowl of Australia is what you call it. It certainly is. That's where uh, so much agriculture takes place from Victoria right up to the western part of Queensland. And this area has not seen significant rain over the last three months. And it's often at this summer time of year, farmers really like to get that rain for their winter crop, but we haven't seen it so far this May. This next system coming through for the southern half of New South Wales, probably see about five to 10 millimetres of rain, slightly heavier Victoria, but for central New South Wales towards the north, we'll see less than one or two millimetres. Mm, okay. All right, we're going to head to a very short break now, but stay with us. We'll be back in just 60 seconds with some international weather news where it's flooding in Sri Lanka.